we down again. I just can't wait to get on the down again. I need to find us this so I can talk with my friends. Just can't wait to get down this chair again. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday, where I discuss my subjective top 5 of any number of things. Um, today we are starting a three episode series of Top 5 Friday, talking about three different types of books and book adaptations, movie adaptations, and all that stuff. We're going to be talking about this episode is books that made great movies. Next week we'll be talking about books that would make that would make great movies and books that should never be should have never have been movies. That's our three part series, but we're gonna go ahead and jump right in to this week's one about books that made good movies. I'm also gonna throw in T V miniseries because I, I have to, for reasons. Number five. At number five, I'm going to go ahead and throw in Fight Club. Uh, Fight, Club, Fight Club is a good book. It is a terrific movie. I honestly think, and so does Polinick, uh, or at least he said this in the past, that the movie is a better overall experience than the book. And aside from the ending being a little bit different, you, you do feel like the movie used the novel as the script. Like there was no screenwriter. They just used Polinick's script as the, uh, as the, or Polinick's book as the script. Sorry, I got my, my words backward like I, I normally do. You guys know me. But yeah, uh, I liked everything about this one. Um, I haven't been a huge fan of Polinick's stuff uh, lately, but I think that I think Fight Club wa wasn't a great book, but I do love the movie uh, severely. Um, but it, it, it's funny because there's not much difference there. There's really no reason other than I didn't enjoy all of the book, but being able to see those scenes on screen, I came to appreciate those scenes more. So maybe it was my reading comprehension is why I didn't care too much for you know. Uh, care too much for uh, the movie, not book, the book, whatever. I need to wake up. Number four. And at number four, we have No Country for Old Men. Um, fantastic movie. Not going to sit here and say it's better than the book because I love the book as well. But I really, really enjoyed this movie. Um, and I think that speaks a lot to McCarthy's characters, um, McCarthy's plotting, uh, his pacing, all that stuff, because it is close-ish to the book. Um, but Anton Chigur, I can never remember the actor's name. Is it, uh, man, I don't want I don't, I don't to say his name wrong. Um, I got it on the tip of my tongue, but I don't want to murder it. Uh, that was good. Tommy Lee Jones was great. Everybody in that movie was fantastic. I feel, um, and I think the the source material, it, it just it just screamed for an adaptation. And the adaptation, who was it? The, the the Cohen brothers? I can't I can't remember who did. I always get like the Farley brothers, Cohen brothers. I get them all confused. Um, so uh, whoever it was, I, it may not have been any brothers at all. I think the Farley brothers. Not Farley. Fairly Brothers uh, do the comedies, and Cohen do the do, do does do whatever they do the serious stuff. Um, but yeah, so number four is No Country for Old Men. Um, if you have not seen the movie, or if you have seen the movie and old, and not read the book, go pick up the book because it is it, it. While it is the same overall themes and vibes and scenes and things like that, you get a lot deeper experience like you normally do with a book. That's kind of why I say that the Fight Club. Um, the Fight Club book isn't as good as the movie because you get a better sense of what Polinick was trying to accomplish with the movie. And that's so weird because he had nothing to do with the script, I don't think. Number three. At number three, we have a tie. Yep, yep, calm down, this is my list, i do what I want. The tie is between the series You, based on Caroline Ketnes's book You, and Hidden Bodies, and hopefully third season is based on You Love Me, even though I haven't read it yet. Stop asking me if I've read it. I haven't read it yet because I ain't got no time. Anyways, um, that's why I'm doing all these extra different kinds of videos, because I don't really have too much time to be reading, and if you didn't watch my comic book, uh, Batman Hush Review, then, you know, you're not going to know that, so I'm putting that here, because it seems like every one of you 
watch these top five Fridays, and I love you for it. I really do. And that's a lie because there's like 9,000 plus of you, almost 10,000 of you, and these videos still get under 1,000 views. But what I'm saying is a lot of you watch it, so here we go. But uh, you, it's a tie between you and Hannibal, um, of course, based on the Hannibal books by Thomas Harris. So those two are tied because I love them both samesies, and they're both miniseries, so they, they fit in here. Um, the, the reason why, of well, the reason for me, the first two seasons of Hannibal are fantastic. The, the third uh, season is very slow while they're doing uh, the adaptation of the book Hannibal before the book Red Dragon, which is weird because Red Dragon comes before Hannibal, the book. Um, I, I know it's super confusing, but Hannibal is not a very good book. It didn't make a very good movie with Julianne Moore and whoever else was in it, Ray Liotta. It didn't make a good movie. It didn't make a good season. But the Francis Dollarhide and Reba stuff, well, it's just the, the Red Dragon stuff at the end of Season 3 completely makes up for it. I wish they had just done that. Um, I don't really see a, a purpose for any of the Hannibal stuff, um, the Hannibal book stuff. But anyways, as far as you is concerned, I love, I love Joe Goldberg. I love Gwyneth Beck. I love, love, <laughs> I love all of these characters and seeing them the perfect casting in this show and I was very very happy with it um now as far as I, I don't have any issues with with uh with you but here's the thing I like the first two seasons of Hannibal more than I, I liked all of you even though I love them both but there was that there's that little bit in season three of Hannibal that I didn't like, and I lo I liked all of the you stuff so far, both se both two seasons. Um, so what I'm 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 calling them tied. I give these explanations because people tend to go, "What do you mean that doesn't make any sense? If you didn't like this on this one, why are they tied?" Calm down. I just explained it. Anyways, so yeah, that's number three. It's a tie. You don't like it? Go make your own list. Number two. At number two, hold your horses. At number two, we have a controversial opinion. At number two, we have Odd Thomas by Dean Koontz. All right, peep this. Dean, uh, Dean Koontz, I, I have a on-again, off-again, love-hate relationship with the man, okay? But Odd Thomas was kind of like a return to form just for a split second before he went full potato. Now, with Odd Thomas, the movie, uh, un unfortunately, we're never going to get another one with Anton Yelchin because he sadly passed away. Um, one of the greater tragedies um, in the, in the uh, the Hollywood spectrum or actors or whoever that one really hit me as I to me it felt like a Jane, James Dean's death kind of deal um, so yeah that was a horrible tragedy but that Odd Thomas movie man that Odd Thomas movie got everything right was it a perfect film no was Koontz's book perfect no but it was it was a lot of fun and i put this at number two because i own odd thomas and i watch it every now and again the other night we streamed it for absolutely no reason wasted internet streaming it uh that actually not the other night this was earlier in the month before my data cat data cap ran out um anyways the this is one of those movies that anytime i look at it i i don't mind watching it like it it's and the more i was thinking about it the more i was thinking yeah i mean it's it's a it's a good movie I, I don't know what else to say, and it was a good book that was made into a good movie, and this is one of the very, very few movies that Dean Koontz likes, and I, I likes his or, or, uh, adaptions. He loves movies, but um, it's this adaptation that he likes the most. Other, well, we all know the you know Watchers and uh, several other of his things have been uh, mishandled by Hollywood, although Ben Affleck's The Bomb and Phantoms, yo! Number one. Okay, so at number one, we have something that you're not going to expect from me. Yeah, you're not, but it's number one because I can't think of a better adaptation that's not Stephen King. And of course, if you guys want this list uh, in a Stephen King, uh, Stephen King themed, let me know down there in the doobly doo. I know you guys are going to say yes, so I'll just go ahead and do it anyways. But let me know uh, if you want me to do that down there. Um, so number one is. Hellraiser by Clive Barker in both aspects because I believe he directed the movie. If he didn't direct it, he wrote it. I'm pretty sure he directed it. Um, so Hellraiser and the Hellbound Heart um, by Clive Barker. Sorry, I, I know everybody out there. It's actually caught. Calm down. Calm down. I misspoke. I do it a lot. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that. I misspeak a lot. Um, yeah, this, this one, I, I don't think there's any other adaptation 
that I I enjoy more um, that than Hellraiser, and it's because Hellraiser the visual the the visuals in that book make for such a good movie. Um, so this isn't really a list of the best adaptations. I think it's books. Uh, the, the way I looked at this list was um, these are books that were predestined to make fantastic movies, um, or at least good good movies. Everybody's like, I thought you said oh, Thomas wasn't fantastic. Okay, I'm sorry. It, it's it's good, um, it, but this one is fantastic, uh, and I use fantastic a lot to the point where you know it doesn't mean anything. Just like I say, you know, I, you say sorry or I love you too much, it just completely loses its meaning. But I, this this one truly is fantastic. Um, I I can watch Hellraiser. I am a huge fan of the entire series. I don't care. Well, sorry, only the Bradley uh, Hellraisers. I don't I don't even recognize, and that's why I didn't even think to when I said the whole series. I don't even think to include them. That abomination that was called Revelations, and then the other one after that. The two new reboots are absolutely garbage. So all the Bradley Doug Bradley is that right? I think um, all the Doug Bradley Hellraisers I, I like. Yes, even Deader. Yes, even the ones people can't stand. Um, the part three is probably my favorite one. I know, I know. Calm down. Hell on Earth is. I love the brutality, especially of the nightclub scene. Um, and also, I'm a big fan of Bloodlines. Those are probably my two favorite movies in the series. Um, but I can't, I, but I cannot ignore the perfection that is that first movie. Um, it's just I have more fun with three and four than I do with the first one, even though I respect the first one for what it is and that it was based on the Hellbound Heart, and the Hellbound Heart was fantastic also. So that's it for today, for this uh, episode of Top 5 Friday. If you have a list of books that you feel were predestined to make amazing movies, please let me know down there in the doobly-doo. I'd love to see them. Even if there's only one of them, even if there's only three, if there's 20, just write it all down there in the doobly-doo. I want to read it. I want to see it. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another episode of Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.